What is up, guys? Welcome back for week five of the NPL Miners. This week, we are taking on Jarrett, or Jar, JB Productions, as our, Bish, or as, as our Bisharp, excuse me, is nicknamed after. You may know him as one of my very good friends from this community, and uh, we are doing power rankings together for the GBA, but today we have to face each other, and if you guys remember, not too long ago, we faced off in the NPL Miners tryout tournament, which is actually where uh, Jar moved on past the pool stage and was able to access uh, getting into NPL Miners, the actual league that we're in now. So uh, this is uh, this is our matchup. Uh, as you can see, he has a pretty scary team. It should be coming up on your screen. He has Megalodios, Weavile, which is his, one of his Zemons, Azumarill, Entei, another Zemon, and Kobalion, his final Zemon. He's got Blastoise, Yuxi, Gorgeist, Hippowdon is a very solid defensive core. He's got a Magneton, an Umbreon, and Golbat to finish off his, his defense. He's got an amazing team, honestly. He's got a really solid team on his hands. He is, uh, unfortunately, 1-3 uh, before this week, before we take him on. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's got a really solid offense, really solid defense all around. It's really scary to deal with a Weavile and a Zoomeril and an Entei and a Megalodios all at the same time. And especially a Magneton, because I don't have much for that. I don't have much for a Zoomeril. I don't have much for Entei. Uh, and I don't have much for his um, his Magneton either, especially his Magneton, because my only switch into an electric attack is my Flygon, and that doesn't really want to take a Flash Cannon from an analytic Choice Scarf Magneton. So if that's what he ends up bringing, it's going to be tough. This is the team that I have for Jar this week. Uh, I am rocking Mega Deancey, max speed to speed tie with his uh, his, his Megalodios. We've got Moonblast and Earth Power because that's really realistically all the coverage that I need. I don't need a rock move. Uh, I don't think he's going to bring Golbat against me. And uh, I've got Magnet Rise on here specifically for his Hippowdon so that I can Magnet Rise on it and stay in rather than having to switch out and uh, have him predict and start going for roars, especially if hazards are already up. And then finally, Rock Polish puts in work. Um, makes sure that I'm faster than any Scarfer on his team and just uh, gets me into a comfortable position late game. Uh, this is a pretty free switch into his Umbreon, which I was convinced he wasn't going to bring because I have a Lucario and a Mega Deancey and both capitalize on that thing really, really well. So uh, this is one of the first set that we're bringing. This does a lot of damage to him, especially if he doesn't bring Golbat, so... Uh, because he I could easily run a rock move and I don't expect his Golbat to want to stay in on that So that's why I'm not running one actually next up. We have Kieran black uh, This is my switch into a belly drum a zoom roll not a switch in uh, but a um, a Countermeasure to if he gets up a belly drum. I have uh, the 40 HP coupled with 192 attack 88 special attack and 188 speed the speed is there for a uh, an adamant entei uh, the attack is actually there to make sure that I can knock out a an Azumarill uh, if it's running Wakanberry and a lot of HP after one Ice Beam and a Fusion Bolt, I still knock it out through the Wakanberry. Uh, so that's why that's there. The 88 Special Attack is just to make sure that I'm doing a lot of damage to his uh, his Megalodios, to his Gorgeist, which I don't expect to come, uh, to his Hippowdon, his Golbat. I can pretty much hit his entire team with this very, very hard. So that's why I'm bringing this set. Scarf Kirim was an option. Decided not to go with it because if I lock myself into the wrong move, his Megalodios gets to come in and set up on me. And that is no bueno, as uh, Old Man Tup would like to put it. Uh, and next up, we have Dom's Game Room. I didn't say the nickname. Chilitos. Sorry about that, buddy. But we have Dom's Game Room, the Necrozma, Colberberry, Brick Break, Thunder Wave, Moonlight, and Stealth Rock. I'm running max defense on this set. Uh, to make sure that I can take any boosted knockoff from Weavile. This is my Weavile check. Yes, a Psychic type is my Weavile check. I've got the Cobra Berry to make sure that I can even switch in on it if I want to. And uh, I've got the Brick Break there to essentially knock it out from full, uh, barring a Chopple Berry. Thunder Wave is there to slow anything down. If he feels like his Megalodios is a, is a good switch into this, I can T-Wave it on the switch. Moonlight is there for survivability. And Stealth Rocks is there, of course, because as you can see, Weavile, Entei, and uh, Golbat all takes super effective damage from that, so that's a very, very good thing to have against his team. I like to wear down his offense as quickly as possible, especially his Weavile and his Entei, uh, if either one or both come. So this is the uh, Necrozma set that I'm bringing. Next up, we have Rise Pool, the Luc Lucario. This week, we're bringing a Chopple Berry Justified set. Justified is just there in case he brings the Umbreon, because outside of and foul play, it can't really touch me. And I'm rocking a, uh, a Modest Nature, this week, because after an agility, I can outspeed his entire team, even certain Scarfers. Uh, I believe this is faster than Scarfed, uh, Scarfed, what was it? Jolly Entei, I believe. I could be wrong. 
Don't quote me on that, but uh, I feel like it is. And I've got Aura Sphere on there. Aura Sphere hits everything that Flash Cannon does it, essentially, uh, being his Magneton, his uh, Blastoise. I'm able to hit all of those things really, really hard with a, uh, with a Flash Cannon. The game plan uh, is going to be to get everything in range of this specifically i can come in on his weavile after he gets a kill i have the choppleberry and i can go for an agility and knock it out on the following turn with an aura sphere or a flash cannon if he brings some of his more passive mons uh such as his uxi his blastoise his umbreon his Golbat. Uh, he hasn't ever really brought them too passive, but if I can set up on any one of them and get both a, a nasty plot and an agility up, I am a huge threat to his team. An, an enormous, an, 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 an enormous threat to his team with this Lucario. So Rise Pool looking to put in some more work this week. It only has four kills. I really wanted to have more by now, but uh, I haven't brought it too often, so that's kind of why. Next up we have J Creams 14. I cannot speak right now. It is way too late. I'm recording this after recording GBA Power Rankings. If you guys are wondering, by the way, I did want to mention. Um, I want to apologize for the lack of uploads recently. I've been extremely busy between the GPC, the NPL Miners. The prepping for March Madness that is being hosted by uh, the Token Minorities and also doing power rankings in the GBA alongside having a full-time job and trying to get all of these uploads up. I am swamped. I know it's not an excuse. You guys are subbed to me for the content and you want to see it and you want to see it as often as possible, but I'm really sorry right now. It's not the best time for me. I'm going to try to get some more content out next week, probably pre-record it over my weekend, which is on Friday and Saturday and get that to you. So... Yeah, that's, uh, that explains my stumbling over my words, is purely because I am extremely tired right now, and I shouldn't be doing this, but I am, just for uh, for upload's sake, but uh, this Vaporeon is meant to take on his Weavile, as well as his Azumarill, if it's not a banded set, uh, and also pretty much everything on his team, realistically. Uh, Entei, uh, it switches in very well to Entei. I have that little bit of special defense, as you guys can see, the 40 right there, uh, because if he brings a Z Solar Beam, uh, so a um, a Bloom Doom Entei, I can take it very easily. I can a wish and protect on the following turn, or to even just Scald because Solar Beam takes two turns to charge up. So that would be fine. I don't really care uh, about his Entei. Um, I can switch into it anytime with this. So it's his Azumarill that's a little bit more of a threat because if that thing does come banded, oh boy. I am in trouble, and uh, not even Vaporeon can switch in safely. I'm going to have to Wish Protect stall him out of play roughs at that point. Uh, and I don't really want to do that because his team can capitalize on me just sitting there and, and Wish Protecting. So that's kind of why I have Roar as for his Megalodios. So that's uh, Vaporeon, pretty standard. Uh, also, uh, Water Absorb, of course, for the Azumarill if it locks itself into a Water move. I can always go into this. Finally, last one is Togevoir finally bringing the Tornadus, and I'm bringing a leftover set with Prankster uh, Taunt. The reason I have Prankster Taunt is so that I can make sure that UC doesn't get up rocks, because as you guys can see, I'm not bringing any hazard removal this week, uh, and I'm bringing mons that are kind of weak to hazards, uh, especially with this Tornadus itself. That's that's the problem. A lot of my mons that, um, that either uh, I want to bring in conjunction with, e with each other, or that prevent hazards, or... Uh, get rid of hazards. They're kind of weak to them themselves, except for Flygon, and Flygon isn't always the best spring, so my team is starting to show its true colors, and uh, I'm not fully happy with it, but this Tornado set, I'm bringing Hurricane, U-Turn, Heat Wave, and Taunt. So Heat Wave is, of course, for the Magneton. Uh, is also able to hit the Weavile and the Cobalion pretty hard. Uh, I have U-Turn for Momentum. I am faster than Megalodios with this speed, so I can get right out of there, uh, go straight into something that can threaten it, uh, or roar it out, for example, Vaporeon and uh, the 104 HP is just invested there so I can take a, uh, a nice shard after rocks uh, from a life orb weavile take it pretty comfortably just heat wave it and knock it out uh, this thing is really just here to make sure that rocks don't go up if I don't see a dedicated rocker on his team then this thing has less of a use but um, scarf was an option that I did consider uh, just because I want to be able to lead off against any of his potential Scarfers, and I don't think that he's going to speed creep this because I haven't brought it yet. But ultimately, I decided that Leftovers might be a better idea. We'll see how that worked out. Uh, we're going to jump into the game right now, so get ready. Alright guys, and here we are, and as you can see, Jar brought the Cobalion, the Weavile, the Gorgeist, which I was shocked about, uh, the Azumarill, the Magneton, and the uh, Latios. So I'm just looking at his team, and I'm like, okay, well... 
uh, if he leads off with Cobalion and tries to get up rocks, then I can just either heat wave it or taunt it, make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, if he leads off with a Zoomer, I can get off a huge hit with on it with Hurricane. If he leads off with Latios, I can U-turn out. If he leads out off with Weavile, I can switch out into my Necrozma. Uh, it's not a problem. And if he leads off with Gorgeist, then uh, I can also Hurricane that. I can Heat Wave it, predicting a switch. I can U-turn out. And I can even taunt it. I can do anything to his Gorgeist. So his Gorgeist is not a, lead, a good lead. The problem is, Jara leads with the one thing that leads well against my th uh, Tornadus. And that is going to be a Scarfed Magneton, which I look at my team <laughs> and I immediately realize I have nothing for this. His Magneton is going to plow through me if it stay if it comes in multiple times during this game. And I know it's Scarf by the way that he led off with it, because he wouldn't lead with this thing if it wasn't Scarfed against a potential Deancey, a uh, uh, Kirim that can have Earth Power, uh, Necrozma that can just call Mind up on it. Like, he's going to have uh, a Choice Scarf on this. There's no doubt in my mind. So I'm not going to stay in here. I'm going to switch out into my Necrozma. I'm going to take a heavy hit, and I'm going to see that this is... Timid Choice Scarf Analytic, uh, and he's going to be able to get out of here, and now he goes into the other threat. So, the combination of Magneton and Azumarill against my team is quite scary, and uh, I, cal I calc this up. I look up uh, Adamant Banded Play Rough from an Azumarill, and it does a max of 56. You guys can't see because of Resume, but I am at 56%. Slightly lower because of the way that Showdown works. But I'm thinking, okay, I can get up my Stealth Rocks. If he goes for a Play Rough, I can live it, and I can T-Wave him on the following turn and make it harder for his Azumarill to attack me during the game. I also make it slower, not that it's, it's any faster than... Well, I mean, I guess it, it would be slower than my Vaporeon at that point. So I'm just going to go for Rocks. I'm going to get him up uh, for his Weavile, and he goes for the Play Rough, and he gets a Max Roll. So bye-bye, uh, Necrozma. Now I'm going to make probably the worst play that I have ever made in my entire life. Guys, he's abandoned Azumarill. I know he's banded because he just killed my Necrozma. He's locked into Play Rough. He does not have a Wakan Berry. He dies to Life Orb Fusion Bolt, and I am faster than him. There is no reason for me to go into my most passive member on my team and allow him to fire off hits for free. Essentially, I'm thinking he can miss a Play Rough. He can. I can wish stall his Play Roughs out. Uh, with uh, with wish and protect that's fine, but the entire time uh, th Well when I switched into this I immediately knew I made a mistake Immediately and I knew what I had to do to, to, to correct that mistake and that was just to wish protect but uh, You guys are gonna see these turns But I could have easily gone into Kirim and immediately put pressure on his team His best switch into Kirim's fusion bolt is either his magneton Which doesn't want to take an earth power and he's not gonna stay in with Azumarill because Azumarill does way too much work or he goes in a Latios, and Latios still takes a pretty hefty hit from a Life Orb uh, Fusion Bolt because it's not Mega Evolved yet. And I could easily switch out into my Deancey sw uh, predicting a Dragon move. But as you guys are going to see, he's just going to stay in, fire off a bunch of Play Roughs. He's waiting for me to make a Miss Prediction and uh, predict to switch out into something else. But I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to keep Wish Protecting. And uh, now I'm back up to full, and I'm going to go for another Wish as he goes for a Play Rough. Uh, as... Uh, I think it's on the following turn that he's going to pull a switch out into his Latios on my Protect, or into his Magneton. He goes into, uh, into Magneton first, and I calc this up, and Vaporeon is very specially defensive. Uh, I realize that his, uh, his Volt Switch is only going to do about 50% to me. Max of 56, I believe. So I'm going to stay in and I'm going to Wish again. Uh, as I, I'm gonna protect first just to see what he locks himself into it's obviously gonna be Volt Switch And I considered switching out into Kirim, but there was no point at this point uh, My 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 game plan should have been to go into Kirim on his Azumarill initially and predict to switch out and go for an Ice Beam or an Earth Power That should have always been my play, but uh, Unfortunately, I went into Vaporeon the most passive member on my team and I allowed him to just pivot around it and gain initiative off of it so now I'm gonna I'm forced to go for a wish as he goes for a volt switch. I know he's locked into it I know that I can take it, but now he's gonna go out into his Latios now I calc this and a max special attack timid mega Latios does upwards of 58% to me uh, I'm gonna be at 56 in a second. So he needs uh, a max roll Thunderbolt I'm talking about Thunderbolt by the way guys if you didn't notice uh, what I was talking about uh, I know that uh, I can more than likely take a timid uh, max speed, max special attack, Thunderbolt. So I'm just going to stay in and I'm going to go for a roar to make sure he doesn't set up on me. However, 
Jar is modest, and he knocks me out with his T-Bolt. So now I'm forced to go into my Mega Deancey. Uh, it's potentially a speed tie, but now uh, I'm pretty sure that he's not max speed. Uh, he goes into his Azumarill. <laughs> I know the way Jar plays too, though, guys. I go for a Moonblast, and I bring him down to 23. Aqua, Aqua Jet is so incredibly obvious that I know he's not going to go for it, and he's just going to go for a play rough and knock out one of my members. But because Mega Deancey looks so important in this game, even though I've already seen Scarf Magneton, I still see a Gorgeist in the back that can hit me with seed bombs and might be specially defensive. I see a Cobalion that can be Scarfed. I see a Weavile that can be carrying Metal Claw. I decide that keeping my Deancey and switching out into my biggest offensive threat to his team, which is Kiram, is a good idea. And of course, Jar is better than that, and he's just going to go straight for the player rough, because at this point, his Azumarill is way too weak anyway. He just wants to get a kill, and he does get a kill. Now I'm going to go back into Mega Deancey, and I'm just going to fire off a Moonblast as he switches out into Gorgeist. Now, I don't see an item on his Gorgeist after I hit it with a Moonblast, so for th some reason, and it's kind of like the events of the week, uh, back in the GOT, um, somebody ran a Scarfed Gorgeist, against one of his opponents. I think it was Techno. I could be wrong, though. Uh, and I just had a mock battle with somebody, and one of their defensive mons, I'm not going to say who it is because I don't know if they've played yet or when they're going to play, but one of their defensive mons ended up being Scarfed, and it was a huge, massive threat to their opponent's team. And I'm thinking here, if this Gorgeist is Choice Scarfed right now, and it hits me with a Bullet Seed, and kills me, I have no way of coming back in this game. Like, zero way. That I'm, I'm just done. It's over. I could set up Lucario, but realistically, like, I have to get up an agility and a nasty plot to win. And I'm never going to be able to do that against his team. He's got way too much offense. He still has Psychic from his Megalodios, and he still has Aqua Jet from his Azumarill online. Had I killed the Azumarill, I might have been in a better position right here. However, that's not what happened, so I'm going to switch out of my... Uh, my Mega Deancey, and I'm going to go into my uh, Tornadus as he goes for a Gyro Ball, and uh, right here, I'm going to find out that he is, as I miss a Heat Wave, by the way, guys, uh, I'm going to find out that he's not choice. So I could have knocked him out with the following Moonblast very easily. And, I mean, Gyro Ball, yes, it would have done a lot of damage had it hit me, but it wouldn't have because Moonblast would have knocked him out. So he was just sacking this thing off because it was useless at this point, um, and I should have realized that. Uh, makes me think of MV versus Geo. If you guys haven't watched that yet, go and check it out. But uh, I should have probably just killed the uh, the Gore guys realistically, and uh, just kept this thing as at as much health as possible. And now I'm gonna U-turn <laughs> instead of killing it again, because I think he's gonna switch out. But no, he just goes for a Will-O-Wisp and he uh, burns my Lucario. Not that this really matters, except it kind of does, because had I been able to get in my Lucario safely without it being burned. And gotten up a nasty plot and an agility. His only attacking move to hit me is Gyro Ball. And if I go for a nasty plot first and an agility on the following turn, then I'm going to take the least amount of damage. He might be pressured to switch out immediately uh, as I get up a nasty plot because I can get up more and then start spamming Vacuum Wave if I want to. Uh, and his team is extremely weak to Vacuum Wave at this point. But instead, I'm going to go for the agility right here in case he switches. As he's going to go for a Leech Seed, he's going to connect it. Uh, it's, it's fine. It's I think it's 85%. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now I'm going to go for a Nasty Plot because I don't have a choice. As he's going to go for a Gyro Ball because I just increased my speed and it's going to do a little bit more damage. Does 17%. Not too much. I'm going to be able to knock out this Gore guys with a Flash Cannon. But the problem is at this point that I'm in range of Aqua Jet at this point because I'm burned and I've been burned for the past like four turns. So now his Azumarill is going to be able to come in. If I had... Um, if I had Vacuum Wave over uh, Aura Sphere, this game was actually over. I actually just won. If you guys look at his team, his Magneton dies, his Weavile dies, his Cobalion, while it might not die, it gets put into range of Mega Deancey, and he would have just sacked off his Azumarill. His Mega Deancey, uh, his, uh, not his Mega Deancey, his Weavile didn't have coverage from my Mega Deancey. So all I needed to do was get up a Rock Polish to make sure I was faster than Magnazone, and I won the game. So, or if I had tail, Tailwind on this, that was also an option. But instead, I didn't bring Vacuum Wave. I brought Agility plus Aura Sphere. I could have realistically just run uh, Flash Cannon plus uh, Vacuum Wave 
plus Nasty Plot and just set up a bunch of Nasty Plots and won that way, but uh, I wanted to be faster than his Megalodios for God knows what reason, um, <laughs> because that thing uh, doesn't die to a plus two Flash Cannon uh, unless rocks are up uh, and he takes two hits from rocks, which I think he did at this point, but anyway, the point was I probably should have run Vacuum Wave. He's now going to go into his, uh, his Azumarill. He's going to hit me with an Aqua Jet. It's going to hit me pretty hard. Uh, I'm going to go for a Heat Wave because it does knock this thing out from this range, and now he's just going to go out into his Cobalion, I believe, and he's going to go for a, uh, what I believe is, uh, possibly a Rock Polish at this point. Yeah, he goes for the Rock Polish, yeah. So he's gonna clean me up with the Rock Polish. Uh, had I gotten a little bit of a higher roll and potentially a burn right there, I mean, I don't think it would have made a difference because, uh, he still has the Scarf Magna Zone in the back, which can just click Flash Cannon. Uh, but I think if I got a burn, then I might have been in a little bit of a better position because I'm not sure if Iron Head from Burned Cobalion takes out Deancey. Would have been able to get up a Rock Polish, but even then I might have still been in, in range of Ice Shard from Weavile, so I don't think it would have made a huge difference in the end. Realistically, I just played this game very poorly. I went into Vaporeon when I shouldn't have. Uh, I did get a little bit high rolled on his play rough on my Necrozma, but ultimately, ultimately my Necrozma couldn't hit his Azumarill, so it didn't matter. I would have just T-waved it, which might have crippled it during the game, but we don't know what would have happened. So, uh, I don't think it's really misprep on my part. I think it's a lot of misplaying. Uh, it's, a, it's a horrible lead matchup that I gave myself, uh, because had I just let off with something like, um, like Necrozma, for example, I would have just gotten up my rocks and that would have been done with. Yes, he would have gotten off a very big hit uh, on me with his Magnazone, but I would have identified that it was in specs from the damage and uh, I would have played around it in consequence later on in the game and my Necrozma would have still been around. Uh, not to mention that I'm faster than his Azumarill, so I could have gotten off a Thunder Wave if he decided to go into that next, paralyzing it, making it uh, susceptible to par paras during the game. But uh, I'm just gonna finish this off here, guys. You, you guys know how this ends. He's gonna go for Iron Head twice. And uh, I say, ooh, cool in the chat. You guys won't see it, but uh, I make him think that I have the Tailwind and Tailwind would actually put in a lot of work against this team uh, at this point, because if I got it up, I had it up for three more turns. Essentially, all he needed to do was keep his uh, Scarf Magnazone, uh, Magneton, excuse me, in the back. But if I did have the Tailwind, guys, this is how this would have played out. I go for Tailwind with my, uh, with my Tornadus. My Deancey comes in, I go for Moonblast. He goes into his Weavile to sack it first. So I click Moonblast, I knock it out. Then he goes into his Latios, but I know the Tailwind is going to, to peter out, and I also know that he has a Scarf Magnazone in the back. So then I would click Rock Polish, and then I would knock out his Mega Latios with a Moonblast, and his, Magnazone, his Magneton would be dead to an Earth Power. So that one little misprep uh, actually did cost me the game, ultimately, because while he did have enough sacks to get into his Magneton before the, uh, the ta well, uh, after the Tailwind would peter out, I had Rock Polish on my Mega Deancey, so I would have ended up winning this game, I'm pretty sure, because I, I don't think Mega Latios takes out Deancey from full um, with a with a Psychic, if I'm not mistaken, even Max, uh, max Special Attack Modest. I'm going to have to calc it, uh, but I'm pretty sure that I don't go straight down, so if he would have sacked his Weavile first, then I would have pretty much had the game at that point, but... Anyway, uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, Jar does take a third win over us consecutively. I am now 0-3 against Jar. He is my, um, he is my, what, what, what is even the word? He's my, uh, my ante, uh, in, in league format. I, I don't, I don't even know what it's called. If you guys know what, what I'm, the word that I'm thinking of, make sure to comment in, in the, uh, description, not in the description, in the comment section down below. Wow, I am tired and I need to go to bed. All right. Anyway, uh, that is going to be our, our, our game for this week. We are now 3-2, and two, uh, unfortunately. We do still have a positive record, I believe. I think we're plus 2. But I didn't get to play my Week 4 game. Uh, it was a forfeit, and I'm probably going to end up having to play it by the end of the season. Now, Jar uh, has my number. He always beats me uh, in League format. Somehow, some way, he always finds a way. Uh, and I didn't expect him to bring as offensive of a team, but I guess that's the only way that he could deal with mine because we have two of the most offensive teams in the league. So, um, I mean, my, my two remaining matchups are not terrible, and I'm going to try to make, uh, make them work, see what I can do. I am facing a couple of problematic mons from here till the end of the season that I would like to have checks to, but I don't <laughs> because my team is very offensive, but uh, I'm going to try to make it work. 
Uh, I'm going to try to bring much better sets. Like, I looked at the team, and it, I knew that it wasn't my style of team. Somebody suggested Life Orb. I think it was Adam. He suggested Life Orb, Kieran Black, and I was like, uh, I'm not sure about that. Like, I don't think he's going to bring Wakan Azumarill. Uh, I lost to Adam in our mock battle as well, but I really felt like I had a decent team at the time, and I switched it up completely. I changed my Necrozma set. Um, it might have been able to put in a little bit more work. I changed up my Kirim. Uh, I, I had different uh, sets all over my team, and I ended up changing it completely to make sure that I wouldn't lose to uh, his Megalodios. Like, that was the biggest threat in my head, when realistically it wasn't, uh, because I had so many good options for it. Like, I, I could have run... Um, well, Max V Deancey is one of them. I could have uh, been Calm Mind, Necro especially defensive Necrozma with Colber Berry for his Weavile. Like, there's a lot of different things that I could have done uh, differently in my prep that would have been able to handle this specific team that he brought. But ultimately, Jar ends up uh, bringing the better team this week. So, yep, 3-2 and two record. Hopefully we can win our last two weeks of the regular season before we hop into playoffs. If we do, then we are pretty much guaranteed playoffs at that point. Uh, because we will have a 5-2 and two record, so that's uh, that's pretty decent. I think top 3 of each division, and there's like 7 of us, uh, 8 of us in each division. Top 3 or top 4 make playoffs, so uh, I would just need to make top 4. I just need to play well in my last 2 weeks. I'm not too upset by this loss because it's to one of my best friends, and he always seems to beat me, so I just don't, I, I just, I'm just going to end up forfeiting from now on to him. I just, I don't want to take 4-0 losses. I'm just going to take 3-0 losses. That's uh, that's how it's going to go. But guys, if you didn't show, enjoy this, uh, this battle, this game for this week, make sure to leave a like down below. Check out my opponent in the description, as well as all the other coaches in the NPL Miners. Make sure to go check out their games. There's a pretty exciting games this week, actually. Uh, one that really, uh, the tide turned completely in the last few turns. And, uh, yeah, anyway, it was, it was an enormous choke. I watched it right before doing power rankings for the GBA. So make sure you're checking everybody out in the NPL Miners. And uh, make sure to subscribe as well if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.